Guy Mudd, and this is my cheat sheet for Wednesday, September 7th. Everybody's talking about Mitt Romney's plan, but what's really in it? Well, I've got the complete plan itself, if you want to read through it, in the uh, text version of my cheat sheet today. I also have a summary there as well. Uh, it's interesting to go through to make sure that you understand certain things for yourself rather than just listening to pundits who may or may not be representing the plan the way it was actually written. It's going to take me far too long to touch on 59 different points, so let me hit on a few. Uh, the big pieces of Mitt Romney's plan would be an overhaul of the corporate tax code. Uh, and this is actually right at a rate that I've talked about before, 25%. You've heard some people that a proposed reform go as low as 15. In my opinion, that actually might be too low. And I know that probably sounds weird coming from a fiscal conservative like me, but this is where we have to be realistic and realize that it does take a lot of money to run this country. With a cop top corporate tax rate near 40% right now, Many companies would end up having a better overall tax situation, while companies like GE that have find loopholes and avoid taxes would end up having to pay uh, what anybody would consider a reasonable level of corporate tax. The other part of the plan would eliminate any repatriation tax, meaning that the near $1 trillion that's estimated to be held overseas by American companies that they won't bring back because they have to pay double taxes, taxes to the U.S. as well if they do, uh, Mitt would eliminate that permanently. Speaking of that, how about for us in particular? Well, he has a plan in place that would end up eliminating taxes on dividends and capital gains for most Americans. The one thing that I take a little bit of exception to is he did actually keep a level of tax on there for those making over 200000 he seemed to pick the same level that President Obama did, but that does mean that for 95% of Americans, there would be no more tax on investment, which I think would be a huge, huge help uh, to overall investor confidence, keeping more money in your pocket, and thus I think you'd see the financial markets react in kind. He also has a serious uh, a plan in place that would eliminate a lot of the regulation that's gone in place over the past few years, uh, none the least of which is around harvesting energy sources. He said uh, in his plan that based upon track record, companies that have perfect operating records on safety would be granted the ability to obtain more energy resources, including in the Gulf. Uh, and, of course, the idea here is we have more access to energy supplies, which should, would and should help bring down prices. Again, a lot more to that plan. You can check out the full uh, plan and my summary on the text version of the cheat sheet. We touch on uh, corporate bonds. Ten-year treasuries hit under 2%. If you're not a bond investor, your eyes are probably rolling over in boredom right now. But here's what this actually means. With record low interest rates being paid by corporate treasuries, it shows that there is a complete investor lack of confidence in this country right now. It's the place of, of last resort. If you're going to park your money for 10 years and only get paid 2%, you're not even keeping up with inflation. That just means you're scared and you don't trust anything else. What that means is... So one more in indication by investors that more and more people do think we're heading towards a double-dip recession. Sorry to have to hit on that gloomy point. Here's something that's not in a recession, though. It's the Super Bowl. Super Bowl ads are going to set a new all-time record. And you remember a couple years ago how they had trouble uh, even selling the game out? They were down to the final week before they sold it out. Well, NBC was able to raise the price $500,000 per 30-second ad this year to $3.5 million. And they only have five slots left. That's right, the Super Bowl, before we even start the regular season, is almost already sold out. And they're getting a lot more money for every single 30-second commercial. Unbelievable, right? Uh, speaking of uh, money, a lot of which uh, was tied up in the food with the Super Bowl ads, we're paying for food in ways we hadn't before. This is a sign of the time story, certainly. Food stamp usage. It's up from $28.5 billion five years ago to $64.7 billion now. We've seen more than a doubling of the usage of food stamps. This is in part part of the burden on the federal government from, the, from a spending standpoint. But more and more restaurants are trying to figure out how to accept food stamps. You're now starting to see major corporations that own multiple restaurants, such as Yum! Brands, which owns Pizza Hut, Taco Bell, among others. Uh, they're actually now accepting food stamps, and I think you might see uh, that trend catch on because it's just becoming so uh, predominant anymore. Uh, IRS, this is going to be unwelcome news for people who thought they finally had uh, complete financial access the same way that uh, standard marriages have. Gay marriages, even if they're recognized in certain states, and we've seen New York become the latest state, they're not going to be recognized for, from the IRS. This means that any 
federal, um, you know, both tax work or anything else that has to do with income cannot be reported together. The benefits cannot be realized. You can see this battle coming. That'll probably be the next uh, battle on that on the gay marriage front is actually trying to lure the federal government and the IRS in kind over to recognizing same-sex marriages. Uh, it'll all be interesting to see what comes of this in, over the course of the uh, next six months as we head towards tax time. And uh, here's one on the uh, that that is for your kids. This is becoming a bigger concern. We've talked previously about social networks and protecting your child's identity. I mean, number one, we know that your kids online can talk to adults, give too much information, compromise themselves. But some of the social networking sites like Facebook that might retain personal information or some apps that might do so, if the, your kids are under the age of 13, that could be illegal, and it could also be compromising your kids before they even had a chance to really develop an identity. There has been a recent lawsuit and settlement with certain app companies that have collected information of those under 13, and I think you're going to see more on this front. You'll notice that in Facebook's privacy uh, policy, by the way, they recognize that no user under the age of 13 can use the site on their own. And speaking of your kids, if you're trying to send them to college on a budget, I've got 12 things that your kids don't need in college, but you might pay for them anyway. Uh, so you can check that out on the text version of the cheat sheet today. And if you ever wanted to record four things at once on, on TV, well, you're going to have your chance. TiVo is out with the first of its kind, four-tuner simultaneous record product. It'll be the Premier Elite, and it's coming very soon. So you can watch four things at once record them all. It's a cheat sheet for today. We'll see you tomorrow.